In my last video, we went over this circuit here. It is a 555 timer wired in by stable mode. There you can see there, there is the pin layout. I did a step-by-step -step build of it. I'll try to remember to link it in the uh, description if uh, this looks confusing to you. And so what this does with the 555 timer, we can set the output either high or low. So right now the output's high. That's just how we wired the red LED. We can tell the output's high when the red LED is on. When I press the uh, reset button, then the output goes low. We have the blue LED wired so that it lights when the output goes high. And then we can press the set button and it will stay in the position that we set it. So it is bi-stable. It will stay in one of two positions until we do something. So in this video, we're going to, instead of using a mechanical switch, which wears out and whatnot, and you may have a circuit where you want it to respond to light levels. We're going to use a photodiode. And it's really simple. So the photodiode is, in a way, a lot like the uh, mechanical switch. Right now, the mechanical switch has a lot of resistance, pretty much infinite. So we have a resistor to the positive rail. Coming to this jumper, there's a positive signal to that pin. Same with this one. So the uh, reset pin and the trigger pin, they look for a negative signal zero volts I should say and uh, right now we have five volts because it's going through that resistor and the voltage builds up there because no current is flowing through the pin so instead of having a switch that goes from infinite resistance to zero resistance we're going to use a photodiode which does the same thing based on light so it's not really a switch though it's the amount of current that it lets flow through depends on how much light is uh, going falling on it and uh, there we go had a little trouble placing that uh, jumper but uh, there you can see we're going one row down from the resistor there and we're going to take the photodiode and we're going to reverse bias it so uh, unlike other diodes where it conducts when it is forward bias this one does too but how well it conducts depends on when it is reverse bias and the light falling on it. So we're going to put the long lead, the anode, to that gray jumper. Short lead, the cathode, we're going to go up one row to the uh, resistor there and the uh, yellow jumper right there. And so right now, there's enough light on there where it's going to uh, trigger the component. It's going to uh, it's a set button and so we will turn the uh, light off. And now, when I hit the button, now you can see the output goes low and stays low. But you get enough light on it, that's my lamp at the lowest setting, and then it sets it. The reset pin is the dominant one. If the 555 timer is being reset, it's going to do that no matter what. So it overpowers the uh, set pin. But there you can see, we got enough light there. And so, if you want something that uh, can tell, if a light came on and at any point because now we can turn the light off again and the output stays high it doesn't matter how much we change the light the outputs going to stay high until we reset it so that's all you have to do to make a circuit that acts quite a bit differently and for the most part it's acting the same the output is uh, stable it's stable because we gave it now we gave it a bright light it's not going to change until we reset it and then now it's going to stay until we give a bright enough light and it's going to stay there again until we reset it so in any case hopefully you found that interesting you can take a simple component and make a circuit work uh, quite a bit differently it's as long as you understand the electrical principles so all this 555 timer is waiting for at the trigger is a low signal and at the reset a low signal and there's quite a ways you can deliver that so hope you found the video interesting thanks for watching I will see you in the next one